Good morning, this is the Eager Beaver Show. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, The Misfy Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and The Pepper Master, hot pepper sauces made from farm-fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Well, good morning and hello, kids, and welcome to season three and episode number 302 of the Daily Beaver Morning Show here on the Cryo Media Network. Yeah. Today, recording day is Wednesday, January 24th, 2024. 24th in 24. And it is going to be um, a rather warm day here at the Beaver Lodge after receiving a decent amount of snow. It seems that uh, this week we're going to have a few days of temperatures uh, that are significantly above zero. So we might have a a lot of melt over the next few days. Hopefully it doesn't flash freeze after that, however, so that we have a skating rink all over. I am your host, the eager beaver pronouns he, um, sorry, he, him, hey, Mr. Beaver A., and with me, as always, is my good friend, Mr. Grizzly. A big thank you goes to our podcast founding sponsors, The Pepper Master, The Miss Fee Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, and CanadianTarot.com. We have a nibble for you today, and we will, of course, be talking about the thing everyone is talking about, because um, I did not have to look for content today. It just kind of fell into my lap. But before we do that, Let's say good morning to Mr. Grizzly and ask him how his mental health is doing today, sir. Well, good morning, Mr. Beaver. My mental health. Mm -hmm. You know what? You know what? Mm -hmm. I'm surprised as you're going to be when I tell you this. It's actually really good today. Mm -hmm. I think... I think it might have to do with something. Uh, I, th- I think it might have something to do with the fact that I'm a, a little fired up this morning. Can you, can you guess why? I'm I would fired suspect up? you are. I'm actually fired up too. I just let someone have it. Oh, did you? Yep. I saw that. Um, the first thing I saw when I was just going through, because uh, when I wake up in the morning, Mm-hmm. When I wake up more than two minutes before the show starts, uh, <laughs> you know, I go through, uh, listen to a little bit of news and you know, try to catch up on things that happened overnight and uh, look at stuff, you know, check out the Twitter feed from the show and all that kind of stuff. And of I saw that, you know, someone had said, oh, well, I don't know, uh, you know, just spitballing here. Maybe uh, those mandates that were like terrible should have been taken off and all that kind of stuff. And it's like, uh, And I just let him have it because there was a study that came out just three days ago, three days ago, saying that the mandates were effective yes, and saved lives. And said, oh, these mandates took more lives. And then, of course, as we reported, um, about 20,000 people died in 2022 of COVID versus about 14,500 in 2021. And that was without mandates. Mm-hmm. Right, because all their premiers were pressured and intimidated into ending mandates way too freaking early, because well, of the selfishness, narcissism, and self-centeredness of whiny, snivelly, loudmouth little p 
peeves. Punks, punks who've never punks. been had yes, their. I, I was thinking of the other privilege before. Yes, I was thinking of another P word. I know, I know. Uh, little punks, this who weren't able to row in the same direction as the rest of the team, this, and were just too fucking, pardon my language, weak, 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 weak to handle the same set of circumstances. All of us did. Yeah, but I'm the snowflake. In order to save lives. That was the objective. Save lives. But I couldn't visit my friend in the hospital. And yeah, well, my dad almost died during COVID in the summer of 2020. Not, not because of COVID. He didn't have COVID. That wasn't the case, but he almost died. He was in the hospital. It was the summer of 2020. I could not go visit him. We all, I also didn't hold a city hostage because of that. Yes. Because I'm a fucking adult. Yes. Jesus. All of us had people we couldn't visit. All of us missed all of us. Almost all of us had our jobs affected in some way or our livelihoods. Yeah. All of us. And the vast majority of us just said, okay, no problem. Because it was a global health scare, a global pandemic. The government was being too heavy handed and forcing us. Oh, fuck off. There was never a fucking lockdown. Not once. I was never locked in my home. I was free to go and come as I please. The province that had the strictest conditions was Quebec because it had few at some point. Because nobody, nowhere else did. Mm-hmm. Nowhere else did. So then these people came to Ottawa one day claiming tyranny. Even though they were free to travel the entire country. Yes. Drove across the country because I have no freedom. And because their freedom of expression was so tyrannically curtailed, they were able to occupy the nation's capital, the capital of a G7 country, by the way. Mm -hmm. And they were also allowed for nearly four weeks. And then they were allowed to occupy borders for nearly a week and a half or two, I guess. And before nations like the United States started calling us and saying, you know what, we can help clear that up for you if you yes. want, which would have been a huge international embarrassment. Yes. And then we had Republicans in Michigan saying, you know what, maybe we need to re- find other suppliers for all of our stuff. Yeah. After like two or three days, because, you know, they are such good staunch friends of ours. They're only looking to bail after three days of having their supply lines Canadians affected for a little bit. And these people, again, also, remember, tried to starve us because the initial objective mm-hmm. was a bear hug at all the borders. They wanted to stop stuff from coming in and stop stuff from going out and affecting our ability to work when we were already in financial and economic distress. Their objective was to bring the country to its knees. And those people that showed up in Ottawa showed up with a manifesto to overthrow the government and took at least 100,000 people downtown hostage. More if you consider all the people that didn't live downtown who couldn't cross town. Yes. Affected tons of businesses. The Rito Center was shut down for three weeks. The all largest of, shopping center in the region. All because of, what about my needs? Yeah. I'm not wearing now, a mask in your mall. Then get okay. the fuck out. So they're gloating right now. And that's fine. Let them grow. But, but, but this, this is the part that was missed. Three important things about the federal judge's decision on the Emergencies Act. Number one, the judge said he would have supported invoking the act as they did had he been sitting around the cabinet table. That with the information they had at the time, the cabinet did the right thing. It is only with the benefit of hindsight, which the federal cabinet at the time did not have, that the judge determines they erred. Invoking the act in Ottawa for Ontario was proper. He merely disputes invoking it nationwide. Those are important nuances you won't hear about in headlines or the hysterical reactions from the conservatives. Now, here's the interesting fact. He didn't want to, he thought he should not be invoked nationally. So can you do the Emergencies Act on a province-by-province basis? Because they sure as hell needed it in Alberta. Mm -hmm. 
Well, you see, with the just judge's decision, it seems that there's a there's a lot of things going on. But yes, it seems that the objection here was to national, and it also seems that because, according to the judge in hindsight, it he determined that the situation in Alberta had been handled before it was invoked. But mm-hmm. it was like like 24 hours or something, if that was the case. And that the RCMP did it. Right? I guess in a province where the police did what it needed to do and had the support of the premier. And I do distinctly remember two premiers, one of them being the premier of Alberta and one of the other one being the premier of Manitoba, sending a letter yes. to the prime minister saying, do something, help us. Mm-hmm. Right. So all these things are conveniently forgotten or looked back at and in hindsight. But decisions are made with the best information we hope that people have at the time. Right. Yes. So this decision has tons of caveats. The other thing is that this, this decision did not rule that rights of peaceful assembly had been violated. Correct. It was unreasonable search and seizure. Did not rule. So you have to take things in the context. So there are so many caveats in there. Mm -hmm. And remember, we also have the decision of Justice Rouleau, who did say that it was close. He did say it was close. Yes, so this will. is not a surprise that another subperson would see it differently because he said another person might see it differently. But this is with the benefit of hindsight. And the judge also said that he was getting ready. He was prepared to rule in favor That's right. of it saying, of saying that the invocation was legitimate until the Canadian Constitutional Federation and the Canadian Civil Liberties Association made their case. So, and since then, you have a whole bunch of people, and again, a lawyer I very respect, but lawyer Paul Champ, Mm -hmm. who was in Ottawa, who keeps on saying he thought that it was overreach at the time and that there were other ways, but the thing that keeps on sticking in my craw is that none of these people that tell us that there are other ways tell us what were those other ways? So I'm not sure whether these people that are making these decisions are like working in this theoretical world mm-hmm. in which, you know, um, well, there was police forces in Ontario and it should have been done, but, but it wasn't, but it wasn't being done. Trust me I guess. when I say and, this, the police so, stood around. They stood around and Doug Ford was too freaking busy too freaking busy riding a snowmobile in hiding because the people that had come to protest are his base. And there was a general election planned for June of 2022. That's right. And he did not want to take action because he knew if he took action, he would sink his chances of winning that election. Let's not forget his daughter was present the entire time in the city of Ottawa during the occupation. Right. So he had a personal vested interest in allowing this to continue. He temporarily got a case of Harponesia and forgot that Ottawa was in Ontario. Oh, he, he did that when the Governor General visited and when the Prime Minister visited him at Queen's Park. Yes. So we have a guy who abdicated his responsibilities. We have a police force in Ontario that did not do what they could do. And we had a local police force in Ottawa that was way in over its head and completely incompetent. They are the ones that interpreted the constitution as saying, you know what trucks were people and that they should be allowed to gather in the first place, creating a security situation because any one of those trucks could have had caches of weapons like they found in Alberta. We don't know. We don't know because they weren't searched. Now, you also have now we, to Now, we know that a whole bunch of those trucks high, hightailed it the F out of there as soon as that emergency act was invoked, though, didn't it? Uh, uh, mostly the Quebecois ones did when they saw that the, uh, the uh, Sudete uh, showed up. <laughs> yes, but all of a sudden, if we can search. Yeah. So yeah. we don't know if any of those trucks had those weapons and stuff in them we waiting for a moment. 
Because well, a lot of tail, a lot of them just went beep beep and got the f out of there as soon as it was invoked. And you remember when they built their shack next to the Rideau Canal, about a hundred meters away from National Defense Headquarters, right across the street, about twenty-five meters away, was a fuel depot where they had hundreds of jerry cans of diesel fuel. Now I'm just going to say a cache of containers of diesel fuel in one match and yeah that's a that's i so, mean <laughs> in hindsight looking back at it yeah you might be able to say in theory well you know the borders had been cleared and you know because the thing in Alberta had been dismantled so there was no there was no emergency this and you know it was unconstitutional and you know but none of that would have helped the situation in Ottawa. None of it would have handled the situation in Ottawa. So this is the thing I keep on saying. It's like, if there was a way to resolve the situation in Ottawa, in any way that did not involve invoking the Emergency Act, and if the federal government had some type of mystical, magical, legal powers that would have forced Doug Ford out from his hiding place and forced the OPP to do the work, do you not think that they would have used it? Mm -hmm. Or they thought it would have been effective. So, Complete dereliction of duty. It's very easy now, in hindsight... To look back and say, oh, well, you know, there was overreach. And I understand the principle from the Canadian Civil Liberties Association to not want to create terrible legal precedents. We don't want that. We saw what happened at the G20 mm. when Stephen Harper was prime minister. Yes. That was the single most one day violation of human rights in Canadian history. He didn't invoke the Emergencies Act, but remember that commercial that we had going on during the election where he said, oh, the Stephen Harper was going to put troops in the streets and everybody la ha ha and then we got the G20 and we saw the troops in the streets? Yeah, that's exactly what he did. It's exactly what he did. He created a complete police state. Now, the Emergencies Act, when they brought in the police uh, uh, from across the country, different forces throughout the province of Ontario and across the country, came in to help out. I don't recall seeing a riot or riot shields or tear gas or anything. Uh, they had the shields to move people. The SQ, which is known for cracking skulls, they have a record of this, didn't strike a single human being. Do you have any idea how rare that is? Mm -hmm. And... As Kit Saucy said, we also had some really interesting aspects to this because unlike the G20, this occupation, and the judge did rule that in Ottawa it was indeed an occupation. Yes, the judge who just released the ruling yesterday, he ruled that it was an occupation, that it was unlawful, and that it was not peaceful. He said that. This was financed internationally. Because the technology exists now. I want to address James' comment here. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to agree to disagree and here's why. You may be correct partly on that statement, James. In the United States of America, there were no violent BLM protests in Canada, ever. Not once. I know, because I went to a few of them. There were no violent protests by BLM in Canada. Period. And, and the violence was usually perpetrated by the police tear gassing the hell out of people. I have that clip, sir. Ready to mm -hmm. roll. All right. Um, Rachel Gilmore has a very good breakdown of very what good uh, breakdown. the judge said. So let's play it uh, so that we can deal with facts. 
Just give me a second here. I have to turn it on, I find. If I turn it on, it works better, right? <laughs> A federal judge just ruled that Trudeau's decision to invoke the Emergencies Act during the so-called Freedom Convoy was unreasonable and violated some charter rights. Though, interestingly, not the ones you might expect. Here's what you need to know about all this. The Emergencies Act is a really heavy hammer to use. So it makes sense that a lot of people would be interested in having Canada's courts scrutinize it closely to make sure no dangerous precedents are being set. Because the Emergencies Act gave cops a ton of extra power and allowed the government to freeze the bank accounts of those connected to the occupation. A mandatory inquiry found last year that the government did meet the threshold to invoke the Emergencies Act. But even then, they said it was close. And now a federal court has found the opposite and ruled the emergency proclamation was, quote, not justified. And that, in using this overly broad tool, the government violated the charter right to free expression and to be free from unreasonable search and seizure. But interestingly, the judge found there was no violation of freedom to peaceful assembly because the judge said the convoy was basically an occupation that interfered with the lives of local residents, workers, and businesses. In the wake of this decision, I reached out to lawyer Paul Champ. He represented downtown residents and businesses during that previous Emergencies Act inquiry. And he told me he thinks the invocation of the act was a blunt tool that was unnecessary. As quote, a coordinated response from the different levels of government could have addressed the excesses of the Freedom Convoy. He broke down the ruling for me like this, quote, the federal court basically ruled that the government's invocation of the Emergencies Act was unreasonable because it was overly broad and there was insufficient evidence that other laws or levels of government could not address the chaotic protests. Even as this judge found the government's handling of the occupation was unreasonable, he did agree that a lot of the stuff the convoy did was pretty fucked up. Like the judge found the convoy quote, went beyond legitimate protests and reflected an unacceptable breakdown of public order. So while a lot of different groups might be presenting this as a win or a loss for a certain political team, the actual winner here is democracy because the government is being held to account. And so are Canadians who think they have a right to totally disrupt other people's lives. And they did, trust me, I lived through it. <laughs> Anyways, the federal government is appealing this decision, so we'll see what happens next. But in the meantime, what do you think of all this? All right. And I see that we have some trolls on here who are going cry harder. You should be crying too. I don't see them, but go yeah. ahead. I'm not crying. We're do, not crying. Do I look upset? I'm not upset. Because, why am I not upset? Well, okay for the trolls in the chat let's let's bring this little tidbit back up shall we the judge said he would have supported invoking the act as they did had he been sitting around the cabinet table that with the information they had at the time the cabinet did the right thing it is only with the benefit of hindsight invoking the act in ottawa and ontario was proper so put that in your pipe and smoke it okay mm -hmm. now this is going to be appealed minister freeland was the one that came out and said respectfully, very respectfully, that they disagree with the decision. Compare and contrast mm -hmm. to conservatives when a court decision goes their way where they get all bombastic and start fundraising on it and calling people activist judges and whatnot. Yes. They're just going to follow the process. Now, this is probably going to go to the, I assume, the Federal Court of Appeals first before going to the Supreme Court. Now, in the interest of fairness, there's a lot of people out there that are claiming, oh, well, you know, this was probably a Harper judge and all that kind of stuff. One, our courts don't work that way. No. Our courts don't work that way. Two, was not a Harper appointed judge. Justice Richard Mosley was appointed to the federal court in around 2003 and to the martial law court in 2004. That was under the time of the Christian Martin government. Okay. When it goes to the Supreme Court, you have some people saying, oh, well, it's going to go to the Supreme Court, and of course there is going to be overturned because, well, it's stacked with Justin Trudeau nominees, and, well, they're going to just go his way. Again, wrong freaking country. Yeah. Because if that were true, you would also have to explain how it was after 2012 when the Supreme Court was allegedly, quote, stacked with Harper's picks. He still became the most overturned prime minister in Canadian history by the Supreme Court. In Canada, our justices have a loyalty first and foremost to the Constitution and the rule of law, and that has been proven time and time and time again 
as is the case with this decision. A lot of us don't agree with it. A lot of us don't understand it. Even those of us who understand it, like me and Mr. Grizzly, how you can look back in hindsight and see, okay, yeah, maybe it wasn't national. Maybe it was too broad. In a sense, can see that there was a reality on the ground and that normal mechanisms weren't working. If everybody had just done their damn fucking jobs, yep. there would have been no need for an emergency act. But we had one premier in particular who was derelict in duty, and we had two police forces, one that created the problem in a great part by determining that trucks had rights like they were people and that trucks could assemble at the foot of Parliament Hill. When they knew that was not true because every freaking Canada Day, at least in the history of my life, and I've been on this planet now for half a century, vehicle traffic to the Parliament is blocked. Always and nobody makes a constitutional argument against it. So I don't know who the person is no, at Ottawa Police Forces, who are, who are the key people that made that determination. But there probably needs to be some further investigations now as a result of this ruling into the police forces and how those decisions were made and whether there were people compromised then. Because that was completely nonsensical. If they had so that was the first mistake. If they had that was the first yet, mistake. Though, it never would have gone to three plus weeks. It would have been the first weekend done. Yes. They never and should if, have allowed them down there, period. And if Premier Ford cared enough about, cared as much about Ottawa as he cared about the Ambassador Bridge. Yeah, no kidding. Because that thing got cleared up really quickly, didn't it? As soon as the U.S. started calling and offering help. Yeah. It was like Joe it Biden took like on two the or three days. Line. Justin, clear the bridge. That happened pretty fast oh the opp were there yeah they did their job then yeah funny funny how that is huh? look mm -hmm. i i i wandered around the streets those days i have video footage of the carnage that was taking place where they're, they're having open bonfires on the street drinking beer uh, police are just standing there doing nothing they're, they've blocked off streets they're blaring horns they're having dance parties on the street they're they're lighting off fireworks and they're going nobody lives there bullshit they had a disco dance party right in front of 700 sussex the most expensive real estate in the city they held that nightly between the chateau laurier and 700 sussex canada's most prestigious hotel next to canada ottawa's most expensive real estate but nobody lives there mm -hmm. so now this decision creates a whole lot of mess of course oh yeah because one you're going to have the loud mouths and the punks because we're going to be buoyed by this we had the premier of alberta saying alberta one i don't remember alberta being a litigant in this case but no there you go she's feeling that you got pp going all over saying they won you got andrew Shearer going oh my god the government did it. it's like the man who still Shearer hasn't won. come clean about why it is he couldn't tell us for 10 years about his dual citizenship and lied about his resume and couldn't tell us during an election why, why where he stood on a woman's rights to choose and a rainbow person's right to marry and all the other and transparent on what he did with all those party funds sending out all the usual suspects are doing the usual things and they're gloating and they're laughing and, and that's fine they're going to have their moment yes. but this ruling if it applies to the loud mouse, it applies to everyone. So the next time that there's a group of indigenous people blocking a railway track or a bridge and all of y'all come out and say, let's crack some heads. No heads were cracked. Remember this ruling. No heads were cracked. The textbook, uh, textbook method to remove encamped protesters was exhibited during the EA's invocation and removal of said 
occupiers. They did not crack heads. And the next time, a black person is summarily executed by a police officer and Black Lives Matter people get together. Remember this ruling. Mm -hmm. And should ever, as the fifth facade, KC, on Twitter says, gays bringing the club dubs, poppers, portable saunas, inflatable hot tubs, and karaoke and see how fast they haul our tatted asses out of there. Yeah, no kidding. Because, and, you know, when they try to double time it, if the drag queens show up, especially with books. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things that always <laughs> Remember this me, ruling. The, the, one of the things that troubled me about when, they, when the police came in to start removing them, the very first person they arrested was the black immigrant from Nova Scotia who had parked his vehicle down there to protest the protesters. He was the first one arrested. How convenient. Just. <laughs> yep. So, and listen, you have other legal minds here, right? Stephen Maher, Ford created the circumstances where Trudeau had to act. The premier had jurisdiction over policing in Ontario and he had let it go far too long. Right? You have uh, David Cochran, another lawyer. He was the first one that I saw that pointed out you know, the caveats in those decisions. Mm -hmm. Because all those caveats in hindsight, I guess, well, applying the hindsight test is easy. And again, kids and cubs, we need people to do that. Oh, yes. It is part it's of the necessary. system. This is a necessary part of the system. And this, we may not like this ruling, we may not understand it. We may think it falls short. Me, short. We may feel it does not reflect reality on the ground. That's why we have appeals processes. And but it will this be decision appealed. coming down the way that it did creates mess. Now, fortunately, if we're talking strategically, it creates mess and opportunity for both sides because while the polyevs in the world are going to let fundraising mm -hmm. and doing all of that type of stuff. But what they're going to be doing is also fueling more of these types of protests by doing that. The people on the other side of this argument are also going to have the PR narrative of defending the rights of all of us mm -hmm. who did the right thing. The over 90% of us who did the right thing and defending it all the way to the Supreme Court and standing up for us. So there are going to be competing narratives. There are going to be competing narratives. But our Prime Minister, our Prime Minister, I hope, and somebody made the comment and I agree, completely agree, has to take off the kid gloves, has to stop talking like the father, It needs to call a thing a thing. Now, I'm not saying that he goes around and calls them loudmouths and pussies. But he's got to literally make it plain, in plain speak, like Jacques Rétien does. Who's at fault here? He needs to, if he's going to win this campaign. Well, and remember what... Uh, the gist of the ruling, the gist of it was the municipality, the police service, the Ottawa police service, the municipality, the city of Ottawa failed the citizens of Ottawa. And when the premier of the province of Ontario, Doug Ford, did not step up to the plate and send in the OPP like he should have because his daughter was encamped with them. And, and because he, he wanted to... Him. And he wanted to stick it to Trudeau, and he had an election. The funny thing is, though, and I've heard a lot of people say he wanted to stick it to Trudeau. No, no, but, he didn't. But I, I don't really believe that, and here's why. Because he seems to have a pretty good relationship with the PM. Not only that, but when Trudeau invoked the Emergencies Act, he was the first one to praise the decision. Yeah. So. <sighs> he just didn't want to be the one doing it. Because he had an election coming up. And here, another thing 
that needs to be kept in mind here is that everybody's saying, I saw James say this is a teachable moment for Trudeau. Perhaps it is. But here's the thing. This measure was voted on by Parliament. And it passed. The measure was subject to a vote in the House of Commons, the House of the People. It was decided by cabinet, but it was put to a democratic vote in the House of Commons. And it passed. Now, as we mentioned at the time, it didn't go through a vote through the Senate because it was in effect for nine, it was in effect for about nine days and then pulled back quickly because it had done what it needed to be done. And we said that that was a mistake. Now, probably would have been a very, very good time to have that vote in the Senate now. Would have been nice to have that second part, having Indeed. it gone all the way through the process and get the royal assent. Because that probably would have come in very handy in the next levels of court cases. But this was not just a Trudeau decision. It is not just a cabinet decision. This was a decision of Parliament. More than one party voted for it. More than one party voted for it. There is only one party at the time. Two of you count the PPC, but they weren't in the House to vote. One party that thought, you know what? Let's egg this thing on mm -hmm. so that the Prime Minister can wear it. There was one party thinking of positional advantage rather than what was doing the right thing. And let us also not forget that all these loudmouths today who are still stuck in 2021, even though they wanted the mandates to be over, still living in the prisons of their own minds, claiming that, gee, maybe you should have eliminated those mandates that took so many lives it cost us millions. And like this. No. What took more lives? What cost us millions? And what made the mandates drag on much longer than they needed to? Was all of yours combined selfish actions? Your refusal to row in the same direction as the rest of the team made it so that the rest of us had to work harder to try and contain. So all those additional lives lost, all those additional milestones that people didn't get to share and have, all that additional money added to the national debt, that's all on you. You did that. Not the Prime Minister. Not Cabinet. Not those of us who sheltered at home. Not those of us who got our shots willingly. You. You did that. By continuing to be out there and acting as vectors of infection. You did that. All on you. And the proof is in the pudding. You look at the data from our near-peer countries, like the United States. More people died per capita there. They had fewer mandates. They had Republican governors that wouldn't do the bare minimum. We had recovered most of our jobs, all of our jobs, and then some, post-COVID, a full year before the United States did. It is lack of mandates. It is lack of national cohesion. It was lack of measures that made things cost more, last longer, and take out more people. 
facts, not feelings. All on you. You own it. You can gaslight us all you want. You could spend all the time on social media that you want trying to pretend that we had some tyrannical government that made everything worse. But if we look at it in hindsight, all you, you did that. You wear it. You own it. And we all know it. And you do too. And that's the reason why you you guys are yelling and screaming so hard and loud. Because you don't want to own the responsibility for the fact that you all have blood on your hands. They never will. They're a group of Karens. If you were too selfish and narcissistic and self-centered to be able to do the very minimum at the time to save lives, we don't expect you to take the responsibility. Now. But it's when it's you yourself in a mirror, you know that old mirror test? You all know what you did. And whether you like it or not, you're going to wear it. <clears throat> now, is this a good decision? On the balance of elements, did the judge get it right? You can make a case for that. And like we said, you certainly do want these checks and balances looking at things after the fact, yes, in hindsight, to make sure that we are not establishing terrible legal precedents because as Rachel Gilmore did say, the emergencies act is very heavy handed. It is definitely very heavy handed, but in that ruling, there are tons of caveats. It is almost as if this judge was saying, okay, theoretically in law, I have to rule this way. But there was a situation on the ground. Now, future court decisions are going to depend on whether or not they're going to deal just in theory or in hypothesis. Maybe there it did exist some world somehow, some way, in which there were some additional laws that the prime minister could have invoked. You know what, maybe he should have just pulled a Harper. Maybe he should have not invoked the Emergencies Act and just send all the cops in. That's how Harper got away with it. But we happen to have a prime minister who's an adult. So he invoked the law. As I mentioned at the beginning of the show, what I would like is for either a judge or some lawyers or people that have expertise in this area to actually sit down with, for an interview somewhere and explain to us, explain to the nation, what are these other measures that they all claim could have been used? What are these alternatives? Given the situation on the ground, not in hindsight, but at the time that could have been used to resolve this as quickly and as efficiently without violence, without pain, without one bullet being shot, without one can of tear gas being deployed, without any pepper spray being deployed to break up what was ruled now by two justices as being an illegal occupation. Making a decision on the basis of, quote, in light of what we know now, and this is Peggy Blair, who is 
a lawyer. Very, very, very respected lawyer. In fact, retired lawyer, but very respected. I believe she even went to Harvard. In light of what we know, strikes me as the wrong test to apply to whether the use of legislation is reasonable or not. Somebody is going to make that case at a higher level court. Somebody is going to make that case. It's going to go through the system. And it's going to take time. But in the meantime, we're going to have some mess now. We are going to have some mess. There are some people that are going to take this and run with it. So we need to get ready for that. It would have been nice had all of this been tidy. It would have been nice if the Canadian Civil Liberties Association went to court also arguing about the rights of the hundreds of thousands of people that were taken hostage during, rather than some overarching broad principles. But then again, that is what the Canadian Civil Liberties Association is there to do. And we've said that in previous shows as well. We don't necessarily agree with the arguments that they're making, but we're grateful that there's someone there making them. Because you do not want to concentrate that much power in a few hands and have it being used irresponsibly. So, I guess we wait. But as Kit Matthew S. says here, it's such a wild thing for a judge to do to say it was the wrong decision, but the right decision at the time. I wonder if there's any precedent in law anywhere for a qualifier like that on a ruling. I I honestly don't know. I honestly don't know. I honestly couldn't tell you. I honestly couldn't tell you on that. The situation was dire. I know because it happened right outside my front door on my street. The local police stood around. The mayor was nowhere to be seen. The the provincial premier, Doug Ford, abdicated his responsibility. He did nothing. He went skidooing, telling us he was on the phone 24-7. The phone is the name of his skidoo. Because quite frankly, he didn't lift a finger. He didn't send in the OPP like he was supposed to. He abdicated his responsibility. The police chief, who lost his job because, well, he resigned, he stepped down, said, pay me out and I'm gone, is a conservative supporter. That's neither here nor there. But the thing is, he came up with this weird sort of thought process that blocking trucks is a charter violation. It is not. Blocking a truck is not a charter violation. They can get out of the truck and walk to the hill. They've not stopped their freedom of movement. They've stopped their method. A truck can be used as a weapon, as we've seen in the city of Toronto. They should have blocked every one of those trucks and not allowed them to get parked on Wellington Street and encamped. For Christ's sake, Bank Street was blocked from Gladstone to Wellington. That's about two, two kilometers. You couldn't drive because it was just nothing but bumper-to-bumper vehicles encamped. His his ruling is bizarre because he's like, well, if I was at the table, I would have done it, but they shouldn't have done it. It, it, And he agrees that it was the correct thing to do for Ottawa. Yeah, he literally says, except for Ottawa. Except for Ottawa. So it was the correct thing to do in Ottawa. What about the Ambassador Bridge? What about Coots, Alberta? Can you can you do a surgical enactment of the of the uh, Emergencies Act? Can you invoke it just in Coots, just in Ottawa, and just at the Ambassador Bridge? I don't know. But it's these fools who don't know a damn thing who keep going off about the Emergencies Act just for wartime. No, it's not. No, the media I read was the a, fucking thing. The media was in asking for it to be invoked in twenty twenty to enforce COVID mandates. 
it's not about wartime. It's about emergencies. That's why it's called the Emergency Act. The amount of people that I've encountered in the last 12 hours or more on online telling me, well, my rights were violated. I'm like, what ones? My freedom of movement, my freedom of thought. Bull shit. You have a vivid imagination. People drove here from Alberta. I don't think the freedom of movement was taken away. Freedom of thought? Nobody's ever had that taken away. People have vivid imaginations. Your privileges may have been temporarily suspended. You have them all back now. Quit your fucking whining, you little pukes. Grow the fuck up. Put your boots on. Pull your bootstraps up and make something of yourself like you always tell us to do. Go to hell, every fucking one of you losers. I'm so sick of this shit. It's like, really, grow the fuck up. I can't be calm about this. Now, the judge, his ruling is bizarre. It is bizarre. It was the right thing to do here and here and here, but not everywhere else. Except, what do you mean everywhere else? Were there people in New, New Brunswick and Nova Scotia and Newfoundland that were, I don't know, suddenly stopped from moving about? Was, like, where's that coming from? <laughs> it was surgical strikes. So his statement is beyond belief and it will be appealed and it will get turned over. Yes. Well, and we have to remember that one of the reasons for which the rules, the Emergencies Act was invoked nationally was because funding can come from anywhere. They're, They're still missing $8 million, apparently. Exactly. And there was no telling at the time where the next action. Ottawa could have been dismantled and something could have popped up somewhere else. We have no idea. No idea. So having it nationally was a deterrent to more movements popping up elsewhere. And to any other activities that would have happened in the other parts of the nation to support keeping what was going on in Ottawa longer. They were broad measures, yes. But if we're looking at it as simply there was something going on in Ottawa that needed to be dismantled and nothing was going on anywhere else, so we didn't need it anywhere else, which seems to be a very narrow application, then this judge is right. If the view is that financing could happen anywhere and little movements or protests could pop up everywhere after this, then having it nationally was probably a good idea and probably deterred that from happening. But that we won't know because the act was invoked and those other movements did not happen. And you can't prove a negative. So, we'll let wiser minds fight it out at higher levels of court, and eventually we will get a decision, and this is something that should probably go to the Supreme Court so that we can have a final and definitive word. I think so. I'm not mad at the because judge as at Rachel Gil No, because as Rachel Gilmer said, the winner here is democracy. Yes. I'm, that's why I said I'm not mad at the judge. Not in the least bit. The I judge did his job. strange ruling, but... I'm not mad at him. The judge did his job. He did his job and he did it the way he saw. And he even said in his ruling, I could be, I could be wrong. He even and, said that and, if he were, he were at the table himself at the time, he probably would have made that decision. But, but he, with he the said benefit that he would, of hindsight. He said that he, he, he recommends that, that, that this is appealed. He recommended that in his statement, in his ruling, he recommended that it's appealed. He says, because I'm only one person and I could make a mistake with the benefit of hindsight. Y you make the decision with the information you have at the time. Y you want to go back in hindsight, we can pick apart every political decision ever made over the last 200 years. Hindsight's great, but I mean, come on, we already had an inquiry. It was determined that it met, it, it met them. It was a very razor-thin meeting, but it did yeah. meet the requirements. Yeah. Mr. Grizzly, do we have a show? Because I know you have a heart out. Yeah, we do. All right. Kids and Cubs, we hope that you enjoyed this episode of the Daily Beaver podcast because we love making it for you, even though we're a little fired up this morning.
<laughs> I'm in a great mood, though. Don't get me wrong. I, I I'm, not mad. I'm not mad at the judge. I'm not. I, I do take umbrage with the ill-informed, ignorant who, who are making, we won. You didn't win a goddamn thing. You didn't win anything. We, we brought the mandates down. No, you didn't. The decision to end the mandates was made before a single trucker arrived in Ottawa. And it was the wrong decision at the time because the premiers were intimidated into doing it. More people died as a result of taking those mandates out down when they did. Yeah. That's just a fact. They needed to be in place for slightly longer, slightly longer. Until the end of that winter, at least. Oh, and yeah. into the summer. They needed it. All the health experts were calling for that. But they, they buckled under pressure. But it they wasn't buckled. from the convoy. The decision was made before they arrived. The decision to impose the mandates was made on, based on public health information. The decision to remove them was not. Correct. And remember, the mandates were provincial. Somebody if, hit me on that one and said, well... You had to have a vaccine to get on a plane or a train. I go, yeah. yeah. You need ID and, to get on a plane or a train. Yeah. Your freedom of movement was not taken away. You could drive across the country. But if you wanted to take a plane or a train, you had to prove that you were vaccinated, just like you have to show ID. It's a requirement for travel. And that's mm -hmm. been lifted since, too. Mm -hmm. And as the premiers keep on telling us, and as the prime minister keeps on telling us, the number one duty of a premier or a prime minister is to keep the people safe. Exactly. That was not done. No. That was not done during the protests, and that was not done with the vaccine mandate, well, all mandate removals as early as they did happen. The first priority was not keeping us safe then. We still don't have sick leave. Doug, remember when you told us we'd have the best sick leave in all of North America? I still have, have three days a, a year. Three. Yeah, it's still not even the best sick leave in all of Canada. No, it's not. All right. We need to get you out here, Mr. Wesley. <laughs> yeah, I'll keep going. And I got to get into the office. I have a meeting in a few minutes. So yeah, let's it's roll. easy to keep going on this one. This one feels the passion, pushes yeah. the passion button. Um, we'll we'll keep it rolling throughout the week, though. So. Oh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> Maybe not <laughs> Friday, though, because we have a very special guest on Friday. Yes, we do. Um, so, kids and cubs, tell your peeps and poops about us. Spread the word, or as Kit Sean says, spread the beaver. <laughs> ah, ba -dum, ba -dum. all right and uh if you want to not miss an episode uh i'm sorry for those who uh well you can't hear this because we're not on podcast yet but i'm the one that's uh, been inordinately busy and has not gotten the episode descriptions to mr grizzly for the last two days but i will hopefully do that today to get to keep us up to date on our audio casts being going public but if you would not like if you would like to not miss an episode as soon as it comes off the bandwidth then you scan that QR code under my chin. Thank you to the Ray Girl, which will bring you to our pod page. That's podpage.com slash the true North Eager Beaver, lowercase letters with a hyphen between each one of those words. If you'd like to support us in other ways, go to our YouTube page, True North Eager Beaver Media, and click the like, sure, and... Sure? <laughs> yes. Sure it up, sure it up. <laughs> like, sure, and, sort, and subscribe buttons over there no sorry lick not like lick, lick. sorry <laughs> ah, darn i was trying to make the joke and i screwed myself up um like share and subscribe are three favorite words other than mr grizzly free beer today which you can help us with by going to that qr code uh, right now it's the one for mr grizzly's asmr but now we have the one for our show you scan that and that'll bring you to our coffee page and the Eager Beaver Lodge Emergency Hydration Fund, where our friend Caesar, hot chocolate, coffee, and that good lad Guinness are all there helping us to write this show and deliver it for you. And thank you to Kit Vim and to Kit Cassie uh, for the tips yesterday. We got two in one day, oh, nice. which is very rare for us. So uh, thank nice. you so, 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 so much. We really appreciate your support. Um, because democracy is something that you do, go get your shots. Help keep our hospitals unclogged, especially during respiratory virus season. Very, very, very important that you do that. And ask for those meetings. Ask for those meetings and sign that Hamilton Helps petition. Yes, please do. So that we can get those armories open. Uh, because, uh, yeah, allowing fellow citizens to freeze, not cool. Failure not of what we're about. society. Yes. Yes, absolutely. From the Beaver Lodge, this is your eager beaver saying, it could be a tough world out there, so please be kind to and gentle with yourselves. Mr. Grizzly, please, some words of wisdom. 
Well, try not to get upset about the judge's ruling. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not upset by it at all. I'm this really not. This process taken place. It's a. It's part of the process. I did, of course, tweet out that you know uh, maybe maybe we should go park in front of his house for three weeks and see how he likes it. We do not recommend that. No, I asked a question. I yes. did not suggest it. I asked a question. And you also have to remember, no, we don't recommend doing that. And I, I didn't even mention the judge's name or their gender for that matter. Just asked if the judge would like that. Now, to that, the judge did say that it was an occupation in Ottawa. It was illegal and it was not peaceful. So thank you for that. I appreciate that. Don't get upset by the ruling, but by all means, don't get pushed around by assholes online who tell you, we won. You didn't win a damn thing. If you read the ruling, you would know that. Of course, yep. they'll, they'll only read what they want to read, just like they yes. only read what they want to, want to read in the charter. Yes, and just like our media is only going to report what it is it wants to report, and I'm sure that a lot of them are not going to be making these distinctions. Of course not. That's why we're here to give you the facts and the truth and occasionally and then some opinion laden rant <laughs> facts first then 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 the opinion exactly. <laughs> all right mr grizzly please roll them credits you are listening to a true north eager beaver media incorporated podcast the True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, The Misfy Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters, CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and The Peppermaster, hot pepper sauces made from farm-fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. We are grateful to the Cryer Media Network for its support, Pete Jarvis for our artwork, and Paul Joseph Something for our opening and closing sequence music. All right, Mr. Grizzly, quick little Easter egg. Pierre Polyev. Oh, don't be so generous by oh, that, that's me. All that's me. Credit. Pierre Polyev's is below. Oh, go ahead. Well, you, you got to scroll down. Oh, you wanted me to start with that. Oh, yes. Sorry. Yes. I was confused. Let me just get this going here. Breaking. Judge rules Trudeau broke the highest law in the land with the Emergencies Act. He caused the crisis by dividing people. Then he violated charter rights to illegally suppress citizens. As PM, I will unite our country for freedom. Sign here to fire Trudeau and unite for freedom. Oh, don't be so generous by giving him all the credit, Convoy PD. You divided people too. Except you picked the wrong side. And also... Signing here won't do a damn thing to fire Trudeau. No, all it does is, is get you, um, get the data, uh, your, your information into their database, and then they will send you emails nonstop. Mm -hmm. Like I, I said something on a thing that they posted, and now I get tons of emails from them on one of my other email accounts, and I, and I keep responding. Stop sending me emails. I want nothing to do with your fascist, jackbooted, thuggery party. Yes. But they keep sending me email. And let's remember... What Pierre's doing right now is the exact same reason the CPC decided to let Trudeau wear this and decided not to roll in the same direction as the team. They saw all that sweet, sweet, sweet donation cash going to not them. Yeah. And decided they wanted their cut. So sign here just means give me your data so I can hit you up for a donation. That's it. He wants his cut. I got it. Always about. <laughs>